Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at this very strange invention called a double arm barn door drive. I invented this back in the 1980s, and today we're going to examine what it is, how it works, what it's all about. Back in the 1980s, I wanted to do some astrophotography, nothing fancy through the telescope or anything, just uh, wide angle shots with a 50 millimeter lens or something like that, shots of a, uh, of a nice constellation. Well, in those days, film had something called reciprocity failure, which meant that you had to leave the shutter open for a long time, and you had to track the stars if you wanted to get a good shot of a constellation. Um, and using old-time film-type cameras, you had to have a means to track. Now, how do you track the sky? One of the easiest things you could do is to put your camera on the back of a telescope that was already tracking the sky. Okay, here we have a Questar telescope set up with a uh, special Questar piggyback. The telescope mount. isn't doing anything really here. Uh, it's just serving as the mount for the camera to follow uh, the sky. So in the case of a Questar, you have a very, very expensive telescope mount to track and do a very simple job of astrophotography. Here's another kind of a device that was designed to do the same thing. This is basically just a standalone little equatorial telescope mount. You could put a telescope on it and it's designed to just have a camera on it in this if you're case. lucky well you can track it by hand like so that's a bit tedious but if you're lucky it will actually have a motor and you can and in, back in those days you could get uh you know get a motor that would plug into the car or you could uh use a battery pack Mo modern ones almost always have a battery pack in this case this has got a wind-up motor very rare you don't see these anymore Anyway, a wind-up motor, kind of a clock motor. So you aim the camera where you want it to be, lock it down, and then the motor will take over and track for you. Here's another solution to the problem. This is a very deluxe, uh, but dedicated camera tracking mount. And these became available back in the 1980s or so. And it was made by Byers, uh, Edward Byers, and boy, oh boy, Edward Byers made the finest mounts in the world. And Byers is very famous for the gears that they made. Uh, this, of course, can be set to your latitude. Uh, you can't see it, but there's an adjustment bolt uh, that I'm tightening down here to set it for the latitude. So once you get the rough latitude, then you can use this this little screw to adjust the foot so you get more precise alignment for for polar alignment and this would plug right into your car or you could use a battery pack a 12 volt battery pack whatever a nice real high quality motor really super deluxe buyers gear here buyers wonderful wonderful gears and you could loosen the clutch and move it around tighten the clutch down and then plug it in and you're ready to go it's tracking and you could of course adjust where it was pointed, you could put a, a ball head on the back of this to change to different angles and so forth. So this was probably the Cadillac. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, back in uh, the astronomy magazines, they advertised these for around $350 or so. I could be a little off on that, but I know it was way out of my price range. This was much more than I could afford. I certainly couldn't afford a Questar or even one of the little equatorial mounts. Couldn't afford any of that stuff. I, I just didn't have that kind of money available to me. So I needed a solution that cost less money that would do the same job or at least come close to it. Let's suppose you want to track the sky, but you want to do it on the cheap. And you don't need real precise tracking, but you need some sort of tracking device. Well, this is about as simple as you can get. Uh, this was invented by a guy named Haig, I believe, back in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, it's just a simple hinged couple of boards. Very simple, hence uh, the name Barn Door. And uh, here on the front we have just a device, just a ball head for mounting a camera. And back here, just a simple threaded rod threaded through a board to push on the other board. And when this 
when, you, when this pushes on this board, if this is tra if this pushes at the proper rate, this will track. Um, it does fail after a while, uh, but becomes less accurate. There's a problem called tangent error. When you push this with a straight shaft, even at an angle, it'll not quite track properly if you turn this at a constant rate. But it's called tangent error. This is my solution. This is what I invented back in the 1980s to try and do something on the cheap that was still reasonably accurate. And it's called a double arm barn door drive. And the way it works is it's got a uh, very similar to a standard barn door drive. It does have the telescope rides on a hinged board like this. But unlike that one, this has um, what I call the driver board. And the driver board and the rider board are slightly different. The angles here are slightly different because the hinge is offset. There's two different hinges. So it's basically um, two barn door drives uh, coupled together in a very special way and uh, it gives you more precision. It eliminates the tangent error for up to uh, 20 minutes or maybe even 45 minutes. Believe it or not, it took me many hours of work on a Commodore 64 computer to analyze the equations and figure out exactly how to make this thing. And I got a lot of correspondence as a result of that whole article. Um, I'll give you a close-up, but you can see that it's got two boards here and one is riding on the other. This is just, uh, this is a collapsing mount, so it moves down. It's really no different than the one that moves, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Same basic idea. And this has a one RPM motor on it. Uh, you don't want to be sitting there turning the thing for 20 minutes or half an hour. That's a, that would be, get very tedious. People did that, but it's quite tedious. Because this thing tracks for quite a bit longer, you're going to need more precise polar alignment. With the single arm barn door, you just sight up through the crack between the boards and get that close to Polaris, and that would be good enough. Uh, but for something like this, with a little more precision, a little more precise tracking, you're going to need better polar alignment. Otherwise, you'll have tracking because of poor polar alignment. So with this mount, I put a little uh, a scope on here made sure that it was set up to go to be coaxial with the axis of the of the hinges and then you'd use that and align that as close as you could to the north celestial pole which is not quite at polaris but you'd offset just a little bit and that would give you more precise polar alignment it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect like with a big fancy mount but you need it to be as precise as possible so that you can get more accurate tracking. If you really want to push this to its limit, you're going to need to have that polar alignment be pretty darn close because the mount will do what it does, but you have to have the polar alignment um, correct okay. as well. Let me give you a little tour around this thing. Here's, of course, my camera. This is what's called a cable release. Old time stuff. I'm not going to show you how you load film. Read the history books for that one. Anyway, uh, this thing here, this is just a, it's just a momentary off switch so that when this thing drops down, instead of uh, getting jammed up there, it'll just turn off the motor when it gets close enough. That's just a cut off switch, basically. Okay, and now you're looking, you're looking down the polar axis. This is just a floating board here. That's where the camera is sitting. This is the driven board here. Anyway, you can see that as this moves, it tracks. And this thing does something just slightly different. It's just different enough to compensate for the tangent error. Well, nowadays, uh, this old-fashioned film camera has been replaced by modern digital, digital single-lens reflex cameras like the one that is shooting this video. There's software processing that will allow you to compensate for the tangent error. This mount is really no longer absolutely necessary, although it's very helpful. And you can do some nice work, even with a digital single lens reflex camera. Here's the kind of picture you can produce. I think you can see that it's uh, still a very, very capable, 
very handy to have such a device. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this interesting and strange double arm barn door drive from the 1980s. Thank you very much for watching.